Do you find it surprising how Tesla stocks experienced astronomical growth? In fact, about 400% growth this year. This sharp increase has gotten loads of attention that even new construct CEO David Trainer called it the most dangerous stock on Wall Street. And many people agree with him. But let's examine for ourselves. Tesla soaring stock price remains dangerously overvalued, analysts say. With more who track the stock, now warning of a painful wrecking not that far into the future. The stock's meteoric rise continues to defy its fundamentals. It's also leading to more warnings of massive correction, perhaps by as much as 90%. The stock stood around $418.32 last Friday on the NASDAQ, its highest level yet, and up 386% of its closing price on January 2nd of only $86.05. The stock has been on a tear this year, having risen around 300% and the company is now worth more than some of the world's largest automakers, including Toyota and Volkswagen. This unbridled ascent makes Tesla the most dangerous stock on Wall Street, contends David Trainer. Trainer asserts the stock's fundamentals don't support its far too lofty price and valuation. We think this is a big, big, one of the biggest of all time house of cards that's getting ready to fold, Trainer told CNBC's Trading Nation. He said a more realistic valuation would be far lower than current levels. I think around a tenth of what it is, is probably appropriate. He said, Tesla doesn't rank in the top 10 in market share or car sales in Europe for EVs. And that's because the laws changed in Europe have strongly incentivized the incumbent manufacturers to crank up hybrids and electric vehicles. The same is coming in the United States. I think realistically, we're talking about something closer to $50, not $500, has a real value. Yep, he said it. Tesla actual stock value, according to him, could be worth $50. That's a lot of decline. Trainer does credit Tesla CEO Elon Musk and the company for accelerating the trend of making electric vehicles more mainstream. A focus on fundamentals, though, makes Tesla a no-touch for him. The fundamental, according to Trainer, being whatever best-case scenario you want to outline for what Tesla will do, if they start producing 30 million cars in the next 10 years, get into the insurance industry and have the same high margins as Toyota, the most efficient major automaker of all time. Even if you do, all believe the rate implies that the winnings will be much higher than that. Tesla is currently trading at a whopping 159 times its expected earnings. According to Trainer, the current Tesla share price equates to a market share of between 40% and 110% based on the average selling price of a Tesla. But when it comes to TSLA stock, reality hasn't mattered for a long time. What actually matters is the story Tesla tells its investors and the stories they tell each other. And Wall Street analysts are finally having to tear themselves away from the facts and numbers and admit that Tesla stock is valued on hopes and dreams. Wedbush and Bank of America are the latest to boost price targets for Tesla. Wedbush analysts like Daniel Ives believe in the story, but he isn't recommending the stock. Bank of America analyst John Murphy recently upgraded Tesla. He upgraded it to, you guessed it, neutral. Murphy was a longtime Tesla bear and a skeptic of the story. But even Tesla bears are being forced to admit that the story itself holds value if enough people believe in it. Tesla stock is a story stock that is caught in the middle of an EV bubble. And then you add the stock split and you have an amazing story. Stock splits, of course, create no actual value for a company whatsoever. David Trainer adds that its recent stock split could also prove dangerous for new investors getting into the stock. Stock splits are inconsequential to value. They're not changing the size, they're just dividing it up into more pieces. Honestly, I look at the stock split as a way to lure more unsuspecting and less sophisticated traders into trying to chase the stock up. And that is not a real strategy, said Trainer. Tesla stock was up another 21% in the past five days. The main catalyst for the move higher was the recently announced stock split on August 31st, saying it would split its shares by a factor of five. The share price rose 12% on August 31st, the day of the split, and it was a great run for Tesla. But unfortunately, the stock closed last week with a loss of more than 5% after Bally Gifford, the largest external shareholder, took a piece of George Soros' playbook and cut its stake making Tesla to also suffer from the sell-off that took place in the rest of the market by momentum investors. Though Bally Gifford said the reduction in ownership was really down to portfolio restrictions. To add salt to injury, on Friday, the S&P 500 Index Committee decided to add e-commerce site Etsy, automatic test equipment maker Teradyne, and pharmaceutical firm Catalent to the S&P 500, but stopped short of including Tesla. Some investors had expected Tesla to be included this quarter. After it reported its fourth consecutive quarter profitability in July, Tesla shares tumbled Tuesday after Elon Musk, electric value maker, was left out of the S&P 500 by the committee that decided on new additions to the index. Tesla shares closed down 21.06%, making it the worst one-day loss on record. Tuesday's drop brought the company's market valuation down by roughly $82 billion to $307.7 billion. 
Tesla stock dropped more than 7% after hours on Friday following the news. U.S. markets were closed Monday because of Labor Day. Tesla's move lower Tuesday also follows a major reversal in the big technology stocks last week amid fears that valuations had reached unsustainable levels. Japanese tech investment juggernaut SoftBank was reportedly the mystery Nasdaq whale that bought billions of dollars in call options in big tech names, including Tesla, Amazon, Microsoft, and Netflix, potentially driving up valuations. Tesla said Tuesday it completed its sale of $5 billion in new stock. The firm closed out the sale by Friday, according to regulation filing just three days after announcing plans to sell the additional shares. Also riding the bear wagon is analyst Gordon Johnson, who also expects Tesla shares to plummet to what seems like an impossibly low $19 a year from now, implying an unprecedented plunge of 96%. As might be expected, Johnson's rating for Tesla is a sell. To justify his claim for this incredible route, Johnson told tip ranks he still has many issues with Tesla. He argues that without Tesla's FSD, full self-driving, and credit sales in 2020, Tesla will lose about $200 million in both third quarter 20 and fourth quarter 20, Johnson believes. The core business is still a perpetual loss maker. He derided FSD has vaporware. He also predicts a sales plunge in the US, Canada, and Europe, while data points to disappointing sales in China. Johnson also takes issue with Tesla's tendency to shift numbers around as it sees fit, as it did in 1H20, where credit sales jumped 782 million versus 267 million in 2H19, making modeling the company's earnings more an art than science. He said the impossible rise in Tesla's shares is a valuation approaching that of more than the entire global auto industry. He asserts this jump has nothing to do with fundamentals. Johnson contends markets are structurally broken and that a bubble is building in markets not properly functioning. While riding the bull wagon is Daniel Ives. On Monday, Daniel Ives raised his price target for Tesla from $1,800 to $1,900. Ives was an early Tesla bull and has consistently been a believer in the Tesla story. To justify his new target, Ives skips ahead a few chapters in the Tesla storybook. We believe that the China growth story is worth at least $400 per share in a bull case to Tesla, as this EV penetration is set to ramp significantly over the next 12 to 18 months, along with major battery innovations coming out of the Giga 3. Million mile battery remains an elusive goal now in the grasp, in our opinion, Ives says. Yeah. Ives also says Tesla will soon be a major third party battery supplier for other auto companies. Looking ahead, we believe Musk and company are slated to announce a number of new potential game-changing battery developments at its highly anticipated battery day on September 22nd, Ives said. Again, he is anticipating Tesla will announce game-changing battery technology. There is no doubt Ives is right. If there's one thing Tesla is good at, it's announcing things. For example, Tesla announced the Roadster back in 2017, and it's still nowhere to be seen. But once again, this analysis is pure speculation about what Tesla will announce and, more importantly, what it will actually be able to deliver. Some investors might say, despite the pandemic, Tesla delivered more cars than expected. Year-on-year -year sales fell by less than 5%. Tesla's shares have jumped since the spring. The value of the car maker has been skyrocketing since March. Tesla overtook Toyota and became the most valuable car maker in the world. Its market price is almost $210 billion, and the market capitalization is attacking $400 billion. And you, as an investor, might be right. In such, you are right. No one is pouring water on Tesla dreams of the future. And what most bearish analysts are saying is the market always corrects itself. Sure, in the future, value might rise by $5,000. But for now, one has to be careful in either buying or selling Tesla stock. The fact that Tesla was not included in the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index, which had now lost more than 50% since Friday, and was hovering around $350 on Tuesday afternoon, is something worth noting. Most of Tesla's profits are based on sales of free regulatory credits to gasoline automakers, whose fleets on average don't meet regulatory required emissions levels. Tesla enjoys a 100% profit margin on these credits since the company gets them as a free byproduct of being an all-electric vehicle maker. In second quarter 2020 alone, Tesla sold $428 million in regulatory credits on its way to reporting GAAP net income of $104 million. When we remove these credits, Tesla's GAAP net income would have been negative in each of the past three quarters. Though a very good strategy, selling credits isn't a viable long-term strategy. As other firms ramp up production of EVs and earn more credits, they purchase less from Tesla. For example, Fiat Chrysler CEO Mike Manley noted in the firm's first quarter 2019 earnings call that it expects to be compliant without the help of credits from Tesla by 2022. Without the profits from selling free regulatory credits, Tesla will have trouble increasing its already overstated profits. 
In a nutshell, Tesla is at the epicenter of an EV stock bubble. There's no way of knowing how inflated that bubble will become or when it will burst. Bullish and bearish Wall Street analysts and flocking to the neutral sidelines. It's really the only appropriate conclusion. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching. Till next time.